into that as well. And they're also not told that the length of these conservation restrictions is in perpetuity. That's forever. Um, by the time they find out what they have done might have been a mistake, um, it would take actually um, an act of Congress and lots of money to be able to even attempt to get out of it. And that doesn't guarantee any success. Um, the town, therefore, will see some drops in revenue. Um, the towns all, all rely on property taxes for the services they provide. If this amount keeps going down because of land that is being put into conservation or open space or whatever, you have to consider the fact that they're going to start worrying about schools, fire, police, all the services that they provide. Uh, so this is a very important thing to keep in, in mind. And now I'd like to tell you a little bit of, of a story that goes with the town. My hometown. My hometown is Spencer, Massachusetts, right in the middle of the state, just west of Worcester. There was 350 acres of two farms. Those two farms were helped by, the town was helped by the land trust to be able to secure that 350 acres, part of which was already owned by the Audubon Society. But um, it, it turned out that they were able to get the grant. The grant lists the land trust as, the, as holding um, the conservation restrictions on that property. Now, without the town knowing, what the land trust did was they connected a parcel of land that went from the farm area right over and connected right up to um, the state park, which is a little swimming home for in town. That's 250 more acres of land that the town didn't even know that the land trust was talking to these private homeowners to be able to give part of their land to be able to accomplish this task. That was another 250 acres, as I said, um, with that land. It all surrounded 350 acres, 250 acres, and then the state park. You see what's happening with the center of town? It's being taken away or it's being corralled into that little area of town, of downtown. Uh, at this particular point, last time I checked, Spencer was at 47% owned by government of some level. And the, but the plan out of the Agenda 21, or, or the regional boards, is to be able to create or protect uh, through open space and conservation anywhere between 60 and 90 percent of a town to, to be able to accomplish what they're looking to do. Um, tax revenues, revenue, revenues, as I mentioned, uh, was reduced in, in the town and is still being reduced. What does that do? That puts the burden on the rest of the town people who are still living there. Um, there's a purpose for this. They want, eventually, the, the towns will end up being bankrupt and it'll force everyone out of the suburban communities and into the cities to live in downtown developments or, as they call them, stack them and pack them villages or settlements. Uh, that's covered in Chapter 7. Uh, Okay. Oh, and let me add one more thing. That when you pay your property taxes, are you aware of the fact that there's a possibility of 25% of that is going into developing those gateway cities? It's being transferred into those programs. Agenda 21 is coming your way, but you can't stop it. America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. But let me tell you something. You have to be brave to continue to be free. Uh, but we don't need we don't need to be purveyors of outrage. What we need to do is to become preachers of the, for the cause. Educate the educators of the facts. Um, no game is ever won on defense. 
It has to be offense to make the game ours. It's time for we the people to wake up, and our offense has to be education. Um, local officials need to know because it's their responsibility to us, those who elected them to protect our interests. Most of them don't even realize that half of what's going on is going on. They just have no idea. Um, as far as the general public, they need to know because the more people that know about this, the more support that you can build to be able to accomplish uh, saving the land, saving your private property, as well as the lands of your town, building up the um, uh, support to be able to have enough people to be able to make that happen. The future of 21 is up to you, Agenda 21. It can be stopped. The more people who know, the more chance we have to save our land. Um, rights and freedoms for all of us. Uh, what's your freedom worth to you? Uh, would you consider investing a little time every month to keep yourself free? With all that's going on these days, what, what needs to be done to protect ourselves? We need to do what needs to be done to protect ourselves. And by continuing our battle and attacking what is happening in our local towns, we have the opportunity to cause enough havoc for these land trusts to be forced and pulled back from implementing some of these pro pro um, programs into our towns. But it takes all of us to do it. And it might only be in our town, but if it's done one town at a time, we can get it done. Um, I'm the founder and coordinator of Save Our Towns. I now have three groups within the Worcester County area of the state. Um, they are all invested in their own towns as well as helping others to be able to do what needs to be done um, in surrounding towns. Um, the members that are involved with my program, um, they, they represent 25 towns in the Worcester County area. I'm also on the board uh, of the Worcester and, sorry, I'm on the board, I'm a board member and the, and the Worcester County Captain of Mass Property Rights Council, a statewide group being developed to assist any and all concerned groups across the state in their efforts to protect their towns from these programs. Um, there are other groups across the state, not only, well, there's Tea Party groups, there's Save Our Town, there's the 912 Projects. And what we're finding is that by joining together and, and knowing uh, what's going on between us all, that we tend to help each other out when something happens in a specific area of town. Um, let me tell you a couple of little stories. Um, I'm not going to use town names right now, but most of them are around either mid or western part of the state. Little town. Um, is having the Forest Legacy come into town and they want to be able to, they're making a presentation to the Board of Selectmen about the, the advantages and the benefit of this program of saving the woodlands in the area and so forth. Well, the word was put out a call for support to help that town. Someone in that town called up. Um, there were 15 of us that showed up from different parts of of the state, Central and Western Mass included. Fifteen of us that were allowed, which I was surprised, allowed to speak to the Board of Directors, I mean the Board of Selectmen that night. And we just each came up with our own little saying of, of what we were, were concerned about to help them to understand what they were getting themselves into. Basically, a decision can make itself the more information that you have. And by going there and doing them, that town, the Board of Selectmen, decided to turn down that program for that town. That was town number 23 and 28 in that area that had turned down that program. That's a plus, let me tell you. All right, there's another town. I don't know if you're aware of this, what's called the CPA. It is the um, Community Preservation Act. There are, there's programs that are being set up in Town, in little towns especially, they're going into the little towns, where, where there is a um, surcharge that's put onto your taxes, which basically ends up being a tax on a tax. Um, 
There's money that's put aside from that money, and then it's matched. You ready for this? They call it matching funds. Um, last year, the average payout was 22 cents on a dollar. But this is supposed to preserve any historical areas in your town, but it also involves um, placing land in um, open space. And at the same time, it includes some um, preservation for your town halls or any paintings you might find, anything like that. Um, and the third item, uh, because there, there are three items. Oh, it's for recreational uh, areas as well. So it all sounds like a good idea. Well, there are plenty of wrong ideas for it to be implemented. Again, a group of us attended the, the hearing for that program in this little town. And it went to the special town meeting to be voted on. And it was voted down in a vote of two to one. They didn't want it. The townspeople didn't want it, and they voted it down by two to one. That was another one. Um, one other, which is up north near the um, New Hampshire border, um, is there was a group of my, some of the group that belonged to, to my Save Our Town had gone into a small town up there that was having a hearing on the stretch energy code. And by the time this member got through with the presenters, <coughs> they actually walked out. The presenters <laughs> walked out, not us. And their town um, special um, Special town meeting is taking place this Friday, and I can't wait to see the number of people that are going to show up that were at that town meeting who are going to let them know that they don't want to vote it. They don't, they want to get rid of it. They don't want it in their town. You have to have the stretch energy code to become a green community. Uh, and so that, that means that that community may be safe. For now, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, can't promise anything. And there was ah, one, more, one more story for you, one more quick story for you. There are um, three towns that are all around this beautiful, well, they call it a mount, um, beautiful area, scenic, wooded, uh, lots of walking space. People go walking. It's not far from a reservoir, so you've got the view as well. There, there is a whole program going on right now to take 2,000 acres of land away from portions of these three towns. With information that we were able to get out, going door to door, letter writing, whatever, the land trust had the opportunity by securing 500 more acres of, of portions of that land so that they could put in for a 1.6 million dollar grant um, to be able to f finish the project by, by making sure all of that land would be protected. Um, the information that we got out, what, what ended up happening was one of the towns, the Board of Selectmen, decided not to sign the agreement for the grant to be able to have this take place. So they backed out of that. So that's four different Look, we've had our losses, but we've also had our, some of our wins, too. And like I said, little by little, if you get out there and do what needs to be done, then you can get it done as well. And you know what? It feels darn good to walk out of those places knowing that you were part of what took place in that town, and you helped that town to be able to save themselves. Um, so, I have to ask you, what are you willing to do to save your town? Are you willing to put some time and effort into actively changing what's happening in your area, here's a couple of different ways that you can do that. Attend your select board meetings and find out exactly what is going on in your town. Um, go to your, access, your assessor's office and get a printout of the land that has already been placed in open space or under conservation restriction. This is public information, so you are able to get it. Uh, compare the acreage of the land that's already been put aside and compare it to the total amount of acreage of your own hometown. 
or the town that you're getting that information from. Um, this is one that was put together by someone up north. He, once you find out exactly, that's how I found out, this is the, they will give you printouts. Some of them are, are like this, some of them are a little bit different. And, and what we've done is to be able to take that information and come up with exactly what the percentage of land is that is not taxable by subtracting the acreage that's put aside from the total acreage of the town. And that lets the town. Ha, what better way to get through the selectmen, but through the money, okay? Um, so that, that's a couple of, of good ideas. Um, another is learn all you can about the subject to empower you to ask the right questions and how to ask the questions to enable others to begin to see your concerns. So that if you're in a meeting and you're asking the right question, others are going to be listening to the questions you're asking, which they never thought, they would never have thought to ask because they don't know like we do. So it's getting the word out. It's getting the word out to them. And so, um, let me see, how are you going to be able to learn? Well, I'll tell you, I had given you some websites uh, to be able to look into. Um, and I also have a package of information that I'll be giving out to you as well. And I also have a clipboard that I'm going to be passing around. And what I'd like you to do, if you want more information, you want to be able to find out any more about this whatsoever, you put your name on here and your email address. I will send you the information that you might be interested in as far as the stuff that I do give out to um, the beginners that, that belong to my group. Um, right now, I'm just totally stretched out with groups that I have, but I'm offering this to you. You put your name and, and um, your email address on here. I will get you the information. That's one. Two, with your email address on here that I can use to send you stuff, you're going to have my email address as well. And by doing so, you will be able to, if you see something that's happening in your town, you want to report to me that it's happening, please do so. At the same time, if it's something that I feel that you might be able to benefit from some, some help from, from members of my group to go to your town to be able to help you out, then all the better, more power to us all. Because you will be the one who will be benefiting from the help. Uh, and all it takes is just sending an email. Um, so, with your willingness to participate, it will allow you the benefit of the work that's being done and the goals that, have, that will be accomplished in your town and area as well. Here's a question for you. Will yours be the next success, success story in your area? You can help make it happen. My comment to you is, you got to take a stand and save your land. I'll take any questions that you have. I must have done a good job. <laughs> Thank you very much, Linda. Okay. You're welcome, um, I want to give a quick story uh, what happened in Ringe, New Hampshire, and then I'm going to sort of challenge you folks like what Linda has. Ringe, New Hampshire is in the southwest corner of the, uh, of the state, and I've been involved. Uh, there's a camp that's, uh, that we use, uh, a piece of project we use there for many, many years. I have some friends in Ringe, and uh, God willing, I may be moving there at some point in my life, but my family, that's not rich in stone. And my family, my ancestors go back many years. I won't bore you with that. But so there's a connection there for me. And uh, last spring, spring of 2012, I got wind as I visited the city at the town hall and handed out these little, these little uh, reprints to the selectmen to just let them off at this town hall. When I visit town halls, I look for evidence of Agenda 21. And I found it. They had a charrette. They had a preprint of uh, the so-called charrette or visionary session that it took place a few months beforehand. I said, so here it is right here. Uh, it's something called Plan New Hampshire. I would say that almost nobody in town had any idea what was going on except for a handful of selected 
the people that were chosen to attend the charrette, or this visionary session. And I simply got a, wrote a letter to the newspaper. They happen to have a weekly, I think twice a week, uh, well, now not ledger. I don't believe they ever read my letter, but I put it on the Town of Ringe Facebook page. That generated some very angry progressives. This Town of Ringe is a very conservative town, but it's run by these so-called progressives. I hate the way they steal good words, don't you? It really, it's retrogressive, what these folks should be called. And as a result of all the nasty comments I got from these free-thinking progressives who are full of love and uh, love of their fellow man, I made some friends because people read between the lines. And by the way, you've got to be smeared if you're taking a stand. Expect it. If you're not being smeared, you're not being successful. And what's the big deal about some, so you call your names? Who cares? I think our freedom is a little bit more important than a few, few nasty names, right? Anyway, um, it took a little bit of time, but a few people reading the page got a hold of me, and something happened this past spring. They had a meeting in the West Ridge where they were planning the so-called smart growth. And one of the guys that was lived in Ridge, his family goes back there 100 plus years, he was really upset. And he made a connection. He said, I read something on this Facebook page talking about Agenda 21. And he made the connection. Although, you'll never hear that term mentioned at these meetings. They will avoid it like the plague. But you can make the connections if you know what to look for. So uh, we, got a, so we got a hold of each other. And uh, he did a mailing to everybody in town. I'm talking about, I don't know, a couple thousand households. He got a few people together. And they had a meeting. And they had over 200 people. More, almost everybody from the town of Ranch. Uh, so what we have now is we have absolutely no opposition to this progressive, so-called progressive agenda. And they were, very, they were going to put wind turbines and solar panels and they had all kinds of plans. Well, um, one of the progressives, so-called progressives, got so upset, she writes this nasty blog blaming this horrible John Birch Society. She was of the opinion that everybody in that room was a right-wing John Bircher. Folks, you know how many members of the John Birch Society were in that room? To my knowledge, it was none. <laughs> I wasn't at this meeting. I was I had another, uh, but I will be up there, you know, from time to time. So uh, she writes this blog, and she's so upset that she actually let us know about one person that's in the town of Ridge, somebody else that we didn't know about that's sympathetic to her agenda, and she let us know what their plans are. She belongs to this energy commission. She wants to get regional greenhouse gas initiative money. So uh, so now this uh, this opposition is a group called Save Our Town, probably independent of your group, but and. Uh, and for the first time, in a long time, there's some serious opposition. And just yesterday, or two days ago, the town manager who helped to bring this in was fired. So some good things are happening. Uh, Kingston, Massachusetts, we had another interesting story there. Simply posting a clip of a videotape of a man who was one of the, one of the people bringing it in. He used the word bribe. We have to bribe people. And uh, someone in the media picked that little clip up that I put up on YouTube. And a few days later, he resigned. See, so things can happen if we make that happen. Now, I'm going to challenge you. If you live in Dedham, you belong to ICLEI, an arm of the Agenda 21. There hasn't been a whole lot of opposition. We've been doing a lot of outreach. We haven't found a lot of people who really want to pick up that baton and go to these meetings. And first, they ignore you. Right? That's the first thing. But when there's enough people who are exposing this, then they're going to come out and you know, deny it, and then they're going to smear you. And then what's going to happen is that these people that brought it in are going to lose their jobs. And in, in this town, you have a lady by the name of Virginia LeClaire. She basically runs this town. Okay? She's the one that brings in Ickley, brings in green communities, and she runs this town. If you look at I know somebody from Wellesley. Wellesley's an Ickley town. So there's lots of people who will get support us. We just have to show some leadership here. I don't live in town, so I can't, I can't do that. I live in Boston which we all know is part of the Bible Belt, so we don't have these problems in Boston. So, um, so I do want to challenge you to uh, you know, pick up that baton uh, and make, uh, do, take some action. And if you're not a member of the John Birch Society, you need to be because we've been sort of leaders in this fight since, well, back in 1960 and 59 when we started, our campaign was to get us out of the UN. And that's, of course, is the ultimate objective is to get us out of the UN. And also get, off, get involved with uh, Linda's group, of course, and all the kinds of other, uh, there's a lot of groups on Facebook, Stop Agenda 21, if you're on Facebook, that's where you get up-to-date information. And make sure you avail yourself of this great literature, that uh, the package you have, and some of the reprints and uh, DVDs that we have. And with that, I want to thank you, and God bless you, and um, we'll catch you again next time.